What's going on guys, Andrew Pillowcocky here. I am back with another video and today we are going to be doing a Vancouver Canucks trade deadline preview. Um, so I've been getting requests um, from the Edmonton Oilers video that I did. So if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. I did a preview uh, for the deadline for the Edmonton Oilers and I got some requests to do some teams. Uh, I might not be able to do all of them if you request one, but this video uh, was actually requested by a guy whose account name actually says Brock Besser. So shout out to you. Um, you're probably a huge fan if you made your name Brock Besser and uh, made Brock Besser your profile picture. So I thought, why not do a Vancouver Canucks preview as well? There's a couple other recommendations, so I'm doing those as well. If you see me wearing the same thing in a couple videos straight here, it's because I haven't had a lot of time. I actually was sick. That's why there wasn't a Detroit Red Wings versus Toronto Maple Leafs review the other day um, or yesterday, whenever you're seeing this video. But um, I actually am very busy, but I found the time uh, a little bit in the morning to make a video. So we're just going to go through some stuff. I've got some notes here. So first off, obviously, a big move that's happened recently for the Vancouver Canucks is that Jim Benning uh, re-signed with the team. I believe it's a multi-year deal, and I made a video on that as well, so check it out. But that being said, it shows that they're locked in place. They have a plan. They're going with the youth movement. They want to get uh, more prospects, uh, something that Benning, uh, even though a lot of people may not like him, I'm not the biggest fan of him either, but he's going for prospects and picks. And, you know, having him locked in means that they're going with the same plan that he's been executing for the past couple of years. And, uh, I mean, a lot of people may not agree with it, but that's the that's the way that Vancouver's going. So, they're rebuilding. They got young stars like Besser and Horvat, etc. So, they've got some decisions to make when it comes to some of their older players. So, uh, names I wrote down is Vanek, Goodbranson, and Tanev. Those are the three big UFAs, I believe, that they're going to be... Uh, you know, working with here, uh, if not UFAs, just guys that they're making decisions on. So, Vanek is probably a guy that's going to get moved. If you're trying to get picks and prospects or one of uh, those two, Vanek is probably going to fetch you that. Um, Good Branson re-signed or traded is something that I've been going back and forth with. Is Good Branson going to be traded? There's been rumors about it. Heck, there's even been rumors with Toronto about Good Branson going there. Um, I'd rather not have Good Branson. I'm going to be completely honest with you. The Canucks can keep him if they want to. Um, there's been a little bit of rumors regarding them re signing him. They gave up quite a bit uh, to get Good Branson in the first place, so maybe they feel like they're obligated to re sign him and hope that he continues to progress. Um, I don't know. Uh, but with Tanev, that would be the big move. So uh, injuries may be a reason why the Canucks are saying, listen, he's very good, he could be a huge part of our future, but he's not healthy all the time. So if we can move him and get maximum value back, there's a good chance that this would be a good move for the Canucks. So we'll have to see what happens there. Um, the Canucks only have six picks uh, from what I was reading in the 2018 draft, which obviously isn't a lot, considering that they want to have picks and prospects. Um, Maybe they make moves to get some. Uh, Benning said that uh, picks and prospects are going to be like gold come the trade deadline. And it, it's very true. You want to have picks going into the draft because you never know who you could select late in the draft. Uh, it, it could be a really, really good prospect you get in the 6th or 7th round. So even if you move some guys to, to gain some picks, um, like uh, who else do they have? Like a Del Zotto, um, there could be a chance to get picks there. Gagne, they have to make a decision on, in my opinion. I don't know if that deal was the greatest thing for them. The Vanek deal worked, but trading him now would make more sense. Um, this deadline is going to prove what the Canucks are doing for real. Um, if the Sedins get traded, which they probably won't, um, then you could really blow it up and get a good return. So, if, if the Sedins were getting moved, I think the rumors would be going around by now because you'd be getting feelers out from teams. You'd want to know um, what the value you'd probably be getting back for the Sedins um, is, which probably would be quite a bit if you're going to retain salary and send them to a contender uh, together. So I think them not trading the Sedins doesn't have a huge impact, but if this was the year they really thought, okay, let's blow it up and really stock up the prospects and picks, kind of like the Toronto Maple Leafs did... Um, I think it would have been a good move if they would have traded the Sedins. I know they want to retire Canucks, but depending on how much money they want come next year, I don't know, this might uh, bite the Canucks a little bit. On honestly, I thought they were going to trade them at the beginning of the season. I thought it would be a good move to do it. You could really get maximum value back. Um, some other notes I wrote down here, maybe move a guy like Gagne, like I was mentioning, Delzato, um, Erickson, who has a bad contract. Um, there's rumors that they were going to actually go after uh, Domi and Reeder, Ryder, um, from the Coyotes. 
uh, which may work but could cost you a lot because I'm not sure if the Coyotes are really shopping those two. I think it'd be a good fit with the Canucks depending on what you give up, but again, Arizona's in the same boat. They're looking to build the future, and I'm not sure the Canucks have the pieces that they would want uh, to really make a fair trade here because I think Domi still could fetch a good value and Reader as well. So really the main point of this video is to say Canucks should really move off their older guys, their bad contracts, go after prospects and picks. It sounds easy, but it's not going to be easy. They're going to have to make some tough deals here, not getting rid of your future uh, making sure you're not buying, you're selling. You need to get rid of guys that you aren't going to use and that are UFAs because it's going to help you in the long run. So um, hopefully you liked that video. Um, if you want to recommend another team, I may have time to do it. Also, um, there's a very good chance that on deadline day I will be doing a live stream and uh, I think Neil from Post to Post is going to join me for quite a bit on there. So uh, hopefully you guys can be there for the live stream. Uh, yeah, so if you're new, make sure you subscribe. I'd love to have more hockey conversations uh, conversations with you, if I could say that properly. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.